Go to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. And then uh, I want your second hand to go to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. I want two passages for you to turn. Ephesians 1 and Revelation 14. Ephesians 1 and Revelation 14. Now the Bible talks about that a Christian, a saved Christian, we believe saved Christians can never ever go through the tribulation. That is impossible. We will be raptured before the tribulation happens and we will go to heaven. But surprisingly there's this brand of Christians, including King James only fundamentalists now, alright? that are arguing that no, Christians have to go through the tribulation and they are going to get raptured after the tribulation. Okay, now, if you argue that a Christian has to go through the tribulation, then look what the Bible says. Ephesians 1, and we will look at verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So notice right here that you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Eternal security. The Holy Spirit will never leave you. Right? Yeah. Right. By how? The gospel of what? Receiving Christ for our salvation. This gospel, Paul is preaching in Ephesians 1. Go to Galatians now. Go to Galatians. So this is this gospel that Paul is arguing. If there's another gospel after that, you know what Paul says? Let him be damned. Go to Galatians. What is Paul's gospel, church? Well, you saw it, Ephesians 1, 13, all right? It's receiving Christ for your salvation. And through that, the Holy Spirit never leaves you, all right? Now, go to Galatians 1, and we will look at verse 6, verse 6. I, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto what? Another gospel. So this gospel is different from Paul's gospel of grace, he says. And this gospel, verse 7, he says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. This is a proclamation that should be keep in mind. Verse 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be what? A cursed. Paul argues a different gospel, even if it's directly from an angel from heaven, let that angel be damned, even if it's sent from God. An angel out of heaven. Now, you know what? There's a problem. Go to Revelation 14. Go to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, we will look at verse... 7, Revelation chapter 14, and we will look at verse 6, verse 6, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the gospel of grace. Is that what it says? No, the everlasting gospel. Oh, this is a different gospel now. The preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Well, no, that's, a, that's just a different wording. It's the same thing as Paul's gospel, salvation by faith in Jesus. Oh, no, it doesn't. Look at verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to Him. Do you see, believe in Jesus? Do you even see the word Jesus here? Do you even see the word cross or grace here? Absolutely nowhere. Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. That's the gospel in Revelation 14. That completely contradicts Paul's gospel. Completely. I don't care what you say. Well, no, it's similar with salvation by faith. No, it doesn't. How many Christians don't fear God today? How many Christians don't worship God today? How many Christians don't give God the glory today? Right here, man, verse 7. If you don't do that, and if you insist that's the same as your Christian gospel, you're not a saved Christian then. See that? Now, not only that, okay, keep your hand at Revelation 14. I want you to go to Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. My friend, fearing God is a work. My friend, you got to realize this. Giving God the glory and worshiping Him is a work. It has to do with keeping commandments. Keeping commandments. Keeping commandments. Now it doesn't. Well, go to Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12. Notice what the scripture says. 
King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived in history, knew that when you fear God, that has to do with works. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we will look at verse 13. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Look at this. And what? Keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. That's right. That's right. So you see right here, fearing God is connected with keeping commandments, works. Now go back to Revelation 14. Guess what? When they fear God, it has to do with keeping commandments. Revelation 14, verse 7. What did the angel say in verse 7? Fear God. All right? And notice this, all right? Notice that this is, so the saints recognize that, and that's why, go to Revelation 14, verse uh, 12, verse 12, Revelation 14, verse 12, all right? Look at this, connected in the same context. Here's the patience of the saints. If you're a saved saint, here are they that, look at this, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that? There's a work involved. You see that? When you're a tribulation saint, yeah, you get saved by faith, but that's not the end. You have to have works right here as and keep the commandments. You see that? It has to be. It has to be. Now, this is a problem. Okay, this is the point. The point is this, okay? If you insist that these saints are Christians going through the tribulation, then this angel's gospel is wrong. Keeping the commandments and fearing God. That gospel is wrong. Obviously that's not true. We know that because this is directly sent from God. We know that. So Paul's gospel has to be, Christians who are under Paul's gospel, they have to be separated from this gospel in the tribulation. They have to be separated. You see that? In order to make that separation, then that proves this. This proves Christians are not going through the tribulation when this gospel is preached. You see that? It's impossible for the Christians to go through this gospel preached. When Paul's gospel is proclaimed, he says, nobody else. That's it. But all of a sudden now, these the saints got this other gospel, which is legit. So what are we going to do? Unless you say Paul was what? This, his gospel, Paul was speaking, was to Christians, not to people in the tribulation. And unless you say this angel with his gospel was not preaching to Christians, but to people in the tribulation. You see that? So Christians cannot go in the tribulation. They have to be out of the tribulation. You know what's even more of a bigger idea? The bigger idea is this, okay? This is a big whopper. When the angel proclaimed this gospel, after Paul gave his gospel, the angel gave this gospel, which is locked. Look at verse 6. It's called what in Revelation 14, 6? The what? Everlasting gospel. That's a problem. After Paul's gospel, now we have this gospel which is locked forever. It's everlasting. It cannot be done. It cannot be undone. Here's another thing. Christians are everlastingly secure too under Paul's gospel. It cannot be undone. You cannot have two undone things together. We're everlasting secured under Paul's gospel. But no, this is an everlasting gospel in the tribulation. That proves we are not under this everlasting gospel in the tribulation. We're on a separate area. You see that? This is definite proof that you have to have, what? A pre-trib rapture. This is definite proof Christians are not going through the tribulation. That is utterly impossible. We have to be out of that. An everlasting secured Christian under Paul's gospel of grace cannot be in an everlasting gospel of faith and works. It cannot be. Thus, they have to be what? Out.